Hello everyone, and welcome to Seminar 7, The Performance Appraisal. In this seminar, we will define what a performance appraisal is and why it is such a valuable tool used by nurse managers in all healthcare settings. The objectives of this presentation are to help understand the value of combining leadership skills and management functions in the performance appraisal process, to learn about the importance of performance appraisals and how they are used to motivate staff and increase job retention, to discuss the strategies healthcare organizations employ to promote a sense of accuracy and fairness among their employees, and to introduce examples of various appraisal tools currently used by nurse managers. We will discuss the necessary planning nurse managers must do prior to conducting a performance appraisal interview and to discover and understand certain strategies used to effectively overcome some common performance appraisal difficulties. And lastly, we will introduce the concept and evolution of performance management. The first known record of a performance appraisal dates as far back as World War I. This practice of evaluating one's job performance continued throughout the years and was well established by the 1950s. However, these earlier appraisals were based on personality traits, and by 1957, employees were becoming increasingly dissatisfied with this evaluation process. So research began, and the results were an introduction of a performance-based approach with an employee participatory component. Many of these initial performance-based appraisals eventually transformed into objective-driven appraisals, often referred to as management by objectives. By 1970, these appraisal practices were wrought with problems and complaints and resulted in multiple lawsuits. As a result, standardized rating scales and professional standardizations were instituted. These standardized sets of criteria became the gold standard for performance appraisals, and by the 1990s, the concept of performance management came into vogue. This was a holistic approach directed at improving job performance and better managing human resources. The performance appraisal is an evaluation of an employee's job performance. It usually is conducted once a year and includes an assessment of the employee's career development goals. This appraisal is a means for measuring job performance against organizational and professional standards. Performance appraisals for registered nurses are part of a process aimed at improving nurses' competencies. This results in higher quality patient care. In addition, future performance goals are set and strategies for accomplishing these goals are established. Performance appraisal interviews are conducted face-to-face. -face. The style of an appraisal interview may vary according to an individual manager's preference. Often the employee is, is required to complete a self-evaluation form. Common features to nursing performance appraisals are a systematic review of the employee's performance by one, reviewing nursing documentation, reviewing patient satisfaction surveys, and reviewing peer evaluations. Included in the nursing performance appraisal is the creation of an individualized professional development plan for the upcoming year. Performance appraisals are considered an essential component of career development for nurses and will be presented in more detail as we move on. Next, we're going to be talking about the difference between leadership and management functions within the performance appraisal. So in leadership functions, you'll see that they use performance appraisal as a process to motivate their employees and promote growth. They try to involve employees in all aspects of the performance appraisal. They're also aware of their own biases and prejudices during the performance appraisal process. They're trying to develop employee trust by being honest and fair when evaluating the performance. They encourage peer review among professional staff, use performance appraisal interviews to facilitate two-way communication, provide ongoing support to employees who are attempting to correct those performance deficiencies, and use coaching techniques that promote employee growth in the work performance. Now, management functions differ slightly from leadership in the sense that they are using objective data to assess the evaluation of the performance appraisal process and also using that data to see the staff education needs where um, performance deficiencies have been defined. 
They include suggestions for growth within the performance appraisal, as well as recognitions of those employee accomplishments. They want to maintain appropriate documentation of the appraisal process and also ensure that they provide frequent and formal feedback and coaching to work performance throughout the evaluation cycle, which you'll see also connects to leadership as well. Combining both those leadership and management qualities, a skilled leader manager who uses a formalized system for the appraisal is better able to build a team approach to patient care. Utilizing both leadership and management functions allows for best possible outcomes for performance appraisal process. When conducted effectively, performance appraisals are a great tool to motivate their employees. How the employee views the appraisal process affects both the outcome and impact. We've seen throughout our research that transparency is valued both between manager and employees in a two-way conversation. Employer support and clarity of those expectations within the job requirements are critical to the employee perceiving the appraisal process as fair and relevant to their job performance. In a few slides, you'll see Mary-Kate is going to do a lit review where she talks about psychological contract fulfillment and how that standard is related to perceiving the appraisal process as fair. Next, you'll see that I talk about factors influencing the effective performance appraisal. All the points that I list relate back to both leadership and management functions within the performance appraisal process. So the appraisal should be based on a standard, accurately assess job performance, employees should have input into the standard and know that standard in advance. So like I said, having expectations and having an outline of what those standards should be, in addition to advanced knowledge of what the repercussions will be if those standards are not met. The employee must know sources of data gathered for the appraisal, so examples of that could be an assessment from their peers, coworkers evaluating nursing care plans, their patients directly, or personal observations from that manager. And the appraiser, lastly, should be someone who has observed the employee's work directly, trusts, and respects that employee. So this first literature review that we have is related to one of the articles we listed as prep work up on Blackboard. The article is called Comparison of the Perceptions of Managers and Nursing Staff Towards Performance Appraisal. I wanted to find an article that related to motivation within perception of performance appraisal and how employees are affected by their perception of whether the performance appraisal is appropriate as an assessment tool. So results of the study show that there were differences between the perception of performance appraisal between nursing staff and their managers. As you'll see within the article, managers have more positive perception of the performance appraisal process as an evaluation tool. However, the employee's understanding of performance appraisal has a significant positive correlation with performance and organizational commitment. So achieving those objectives within nursing management are dependent on appraisal process being effectively carried out. And the article talked about how their research found there's a high level of acceptance and employee satisfaction achieved through using these three factors. An efficient appeal procedure related to their performance appraisal, a combined purpose of what that appraisal process is assessing, and employee participation within its design. Information obtained during the performance appraisal can be used to develop the employee's potential and recognize their strengths and weaknesses, in addition to setting goals for the future. When doing a performance appraisal, the manager needs to use strategies that increase the likelihood of a fair and accurate appraisal. So these are a few strategies for the manager to use to achieve accuracy and fairness when doing the appraisal. Uh, the first strategy is to try to be aware of any biases or prejudices. This helps to guard against any subjective attitudes and values influencing the appraisal. Um, the consultations should also be sought frequently. Another manager should be consulted when a question about a personal bias exists and in many other situations, especially when a manager is doing their first performance appraisal. 
Uh, data should be gathered appropriately. Data gathered needs to reflect the entire time period of the appraisal. Don't just gather data right before the appraisal because all employees have uh, periods when they are less productive and motivated and data should be gathered systematically and regularly. Uh, accurate record keeping is another critical part of ensuring accuracy and fairness in the performance appraisal. The record should have both positive and negative performance behavior throughout the performance period. The manager should make a habit of keeping notes about observations, others comments, and his or her periodic review of charts and nursing care plans. When ongoing notes are not maintained throughout the evaluation period, the appraiser is likely to experience the recency effect where recent issues are weighed more heavily than past performance. Collected assessments should be con should contain positive examples of growth and achievement and areas where development is needed. Often collected data concentrates on negative aspects of performance instead of recognizing their growth and accomplishments. Some effort must be made to include the employee's own appraisal of his or her work. Self-appraisal may be performed for several appropriate ways. Employees can be instructed to come to the appraisal interview with some informal thoughts about the performance or they can work with their managers in completing a joint assessment. It can be beneficial to involve the employees assessing his or her work performance and in goal setting. The appraiser needs to guard against three common pitfalls of assessment, the halo effect, horns effect, and the central tendency. The halo effect occurs when the appraiser lets one or two positive aspects of the assessment or behavior of the employee overly influence all other aspects of employee's performance. The horns effect occurs when the appraiser allows some negative aspects of the employee's performance to influence the assessment to such an extent that other levels of job performance are not accurately recorded. Likewise, rating employees more favorably than their performance merits cheats them and the department of the benefits of exploring areas of improvement and the opportunities for developing and coaching. Uh, lastly, reviewers need to guard against a bias known as the Matthew effect. The Matthew effect is said to occur when employees review received the same appraisal results year after year. Those who performed well in their employment are likely to do well. Those who struggled will continue to struggle. In other words, no matter how hard an employee works to improve his or her past appraisal, impedes any chance for future improvement. And at the end of the appraisal, the manager can ask the employee how the organization or the manager can make work easier to achieve better quality, greater volume, and improved outcome. So this is an article that talks about a study that was done to look at what drives perceived fairness of a performance appraisal. In this study, the performance appraisal was based on employees' perception of whether their performance was fair procedurally and if it accurately or reasonably reflected employees' jobs performance. This, the results showed that the employees felt the performance appraisal was not fair and accurate, and this was contingent on how the employee felt they were supported by their manager and how overall they felt uh, towards the organization. Another issue that was found in the study in determining how an employee felt they were evaluated were having vague expectations of their job duties. It was suggested that employers have clear verbal and written details of what is expectable performance goals. Overall, employees need to feel they are supported by their managers in order to meet desired performance goals and have a positive attitude towards the organization. There are various tools that can be used when conducting a performance appraisal. The effectiveness of a performance appraisal is only as good as the tools used to create those assessments, is a quote directly from our textbook. Tools include rating scales, checklists, essays, and self-appraisals, and most organizations tend to use a combination of multiple tools instead of basing their performance appraisals on a single type of tool. One type of tool used during performance appraisals is scales, and there are a few different types we can go over now. Trait rating. This was traditionally used the most, but has become less in recent years because it has been found to be better to do appraisals based off of quality and quantity of work, whereas this scale looks at the individual employee's personality and the traits in which they have. 
There's also job dimension scales, which focus on the job requirements or the bars, which is behaviorally anchored rating scales. And this highlights key areas of responsibility and uses that ranking of importance to give different reviews. Here is an example of a job dimension rating scale. This lists different aspects of a specific job on the left-hand side and then has a numeric system on the right for each individual to be graded upon. Here, a 5 would be excellent and a 1 would be poor. These scores would be added up to give a quantitative value to a performance appraisal. Another performance appraisal tool commonly used are checklists. There are also different types of these. A weighted scale checklist is used most frequently and looks for desirable job behaviors and attitudes. A force checklist focuses on both a desirable and undesirable behavior for each employee, and a simple checklist uses words and phrases within different dimensions of behavior to describe and review each employee. The biggest problem with checklists is that there is no performance standards to be held against. There are also other types of performance appraisal tools, such as essay or freeform reviews. These are narrative and anecdotal, and they include strengths and weaknesses, but they may leave room for personal bias by the appraiser. Self-appraisals are done by the employee themselves and can help result in self-awareness and growth. Management by objectives and 360-degree evaluation play important roles in both performance reviews and growing the nurse and improving the workplace environment. Each unit should have their own formal procedure and properly use the information gained during a performance appraisal. This can be an emotionally charged event for both parties, so trying to prepare by taking the emotion out, out of it is very important. Interviews tend to be the most disliked portion of the job by many managers because they typically do not enjoy judging or criticizing their employees, and it can be very anxiety-inducing for the employees as well. There is a greater chance that the performance appraisal will have a positive outcome if certain conditions are met before, during, and after the interview. Here are some strategies to help nurse managers overcome appraisal interview difficulties. Employee aware of standard. Before the interview, the employee should be aware of the standard at which they are being evaluated at. For example, the employee should have a copy of the appraisal form so they can review the criteria. Appropriate time. Avoid times when the employee is busy or immediately after a personal event. Choose a time that is conducive for a meaningful and productive conference. Advance notice. Employees should be aware of the performance appraisal approximately two to three days in advance to mentally and emotionally prepare for the meeting. Just as the employee prepares, the evaluator should also do the same. The appraisal should be conducted in a private, quiet, comfortable place where the meeting will not be interrupted. And finally, collegiality is valued over power, as power and status interferes with professionals performing meaningful and constructive relationships. At the start of the meeting, you want to greet the employee warmly, sit next to them, and begin the conference on a pleasant note. During the interview, the meeting should be non-directive and participatory. Input from the employee is desirable and should be encouraged, as this provides valuable feedback to the manager. Ask about what the employee thought about their progress since their previous appraisal. Avoid surprises. In the meeting, you want to avoid surprises, and as nurse leaders, continual communication should be maintained with the staff, so surprises should be a rarity. Do not overwhelm the employee with multiple issues as they will be less receptive to change. Focus on specific goals and on major themes. Include goodwill deposits. These are positive affirmations and encouragement to motivate employees to improve their performance. Celebrate the employee's idiosyncrasies and valuable contributions to the healthcare team. Focus on performance and not characteristics. You are evaluating the employee's performance, not their character. Avoid generalities such as, your performance is fine. Ambiguity hinders communication, so it would be direct and provide explicit examples that relate to the employee when prompted. Never exploit power. Although managers have authority, you never want to exploit power as the purpose of the performance appraisal is to focus on the employee's performance and needs. Simple terminology. Use clear language to avoid confusion in the messages conveyed. Set goals. Goal setting provides direction for the employees and is used to determine what resources are needed to accomplish said goals. And finally, be available. Be available if the employee wants to discuss the details of the appraisal any further. Finally, you have after the interview. Agreement on appraisal. 
At the end of the appraisal, both the manager and the employee signs the appraisal form seen on the slide. The signature confirms that both parties have read and are in agreement with the appraisal. Remember to end on a pleasant note and to reconfirm goals. Reconfirm goals to summarize and document target dates as well as any required support needed in the comment section. Follow up for long-term coaching needs. Again, plan on how to follow up with the employee and on how to coach them to accomplish their goals. Performance management is when appraisals are replaced by ongoing evaluations. This requires more face-to-face -face time with subordinates. Coaching can guide others into increased competence, commitment, and confidence. Day-to-day -day feedback is one of the best methods for improving work performance and building a team approach. Effective coaches are specific, descriptive, sensitive in timing, and meet the need of the employee. The dynamic between employees and managers is shifting dramatically. Workplaces are increasingly encouraging employees to provide feedback on their workplace and the quality of their supervision. Watch the following video and keep this question in mind. What went wrong and how could you, as the manager, have improved this situation? On Monday. Today is a good day. It's my performance review. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're excited about the performance review. My next meeting is a one-on-one. -on -one. I have to deliver a performance review. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's with Matt. Oh, I can see why you're so depressed. Man, I'm stoked about this one. Because last time Melanie gave me kind of a bad review. Last time I gave him an extremely negative review. What exactly did she say? You know, mumbo jumbo manager speak. I couldn't have been more clear. Like needing a little touch up here and there. His appearance was sloppy, he was passive and unmotivated. Maybe learn some more stuff. And the quality of his work was completely substandard. And we talked about my future. I also said that I didn't see much of a future for him. Dude, you have to read between the lines, but she was majorly hinting that I could go places. I don't think he's gonna make it to the end of the year anyway. With a little spit and polish? No big deal. So that's what I did. Got myself some spit and polish. Buddy, you're looking at Mr. Improved. If anything, he's gotten worse. I don't know which is more objectionable, his social deficiencies or his technical incompetencies. I mean, I busted my hump this last year. I even took some night classes at the community college. Well, I can see why you're so enthused about things. It's more than that. I think I'll finally get that promotion I deserve. And believe me, with a new baby on the way, I could use all the cash I could get. I'm putting Matt on probation. And that means no yearly bonus, but fortunately I hear his wife has a good job. Especially with my wife losing her job and all. Sorry to hear about that, mate. Tell you what, you give me a call after the review and we'll celebrate over lunch or something. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Cheerio. <laughs> well, call me for lunch later. I have a feeling you're gonna need to take a break. Well, Matt, are you ready? You bet. Uh, now, I'm... Jumping the gun a little bit here, I know. Uh, and uh, maybe it's just nerves because my wife lost her job and all. But you'll see I deserve that promotion. Uh, promotion? Yes. And I have you to thank. You know that little pep talk last time? And with being a new daddy and all.